Are you completely satisfied with your life right now? Odds are that you're not. And there are so many areas where people can improve on, where 99.9% .9 of people can improve on. And you have to understand that happiness doesn't come from just getting more money or getting uh, more females on your roster or uh, just collecting material possessions or this sort of thing. Happiness is a separate skill in and of itself. Now, when you do gain more money and these sorts of things, it will definitely still contribute to your happiness regardless anyways, as long as you're not neglecting certain portions of your life. For example, if somebody only focuses on money, but they let themselves get fast and have no, I meant fat, not fast, and they let all of their relationships go to shit, then even if they have money, obviously they're still not going to have an enjoyable and satisfying life, particularly if they haven't worked on cultivating their skill of being content and happy, which can be done through stoicism as one example, as one route to cultivating your sense of peace and contention. If they don't do that and they only focus on making money, then of course they are not going to be having a good time. But the other thing is that you still have to consider the fact that after they get a lot of money, after they're a millionaire or whatever, then they have all the time in the world to work on improving the other areas of their life if they so choose. At that point, they don't have to work anymore and they can make their money work for them. And basically, they would be able to free up all of their time so then they could use their time as they wish and one option of using their time is to work on improving those other areas of their lives so where do emotions come into all of this either you let your emotions control you or you control your emotions if you let your emotions control you then you will never do any I'm talking about 100% of the time, if your emotions are controlling you 100% of the time, then you will never achieve anything significant. The reason why champions are champions is because they worked through all those times that they did not want to go to the gym, where they did not want to work, where they did not want to put in that extra little bit of effort, but they did it anyways. And the funny thing is, most people don't think long term enough to see this. In fact, most people are so like brainless that they would never even watch this type of video and they would never watch more than 10% of this type of video on top of that. So if you're even watching already to this point, you're like, a, how do you call it? You're a select breed of human being who actually wants to improve themselves, right? Because most people are not like that. Anyways, where I was going was that if somebody lets their emotions dictate their behavior 100% of the time, so basically they have a very poor prefrontal cortex control in their brain, which is largely responsible for your decision making as well as logic and reasoning. So if their emotions dictate them 100% of the time, then the only times that they're going to do work are either when they're motivated by fear, for example, fear of losing their job, or when they're just very motivated because they watched some like motivational video on YouTube or something like this, like David Goggins or uh, who else is there? I don't know, I guess Andrew Tate. I like Andrew Tate personally. Whatever, whatever motivational speaker influences and resonates with them right so uh other than that sometimes maybe they're feeling motivated because they watched a movie where a guy goes from rags to riches or whatever you know they're motivated for some reason maybe just at the time they're feeling like oh i really want this thing and then they work for that they're not going to get much done because as soon as they're bored then they're going to stop right like when you're working on something boredom is a natural hurdle 
at the beginning of the work period before you get into that flow state and the flow stage once you get into that then then you enjoy it right it's just it doesn't even feel like work anymore you're just into it. you're in the zone and it's a lovely feeling and the funny part is that after somebody goes through the discomfort of those initial periods of beginning to work on something then it actually becomes enjoyable um, and then after that once you finish it once you complete it that's also feels good you feel content about what you've done because you number one you build more trust with yourself right and number two you know that you did something good you did something fulfilling and productive with your time now at this point in the video i would like you to uh i would like you to like and subscribe or whatever because it helps with the algorithm it doesn't take much of your time barely any energy you'll burn a calorie or whatever but anyways back to the video i'm this is all off the top i don't have anything written down or anything like that what i want to talk about next is how society is telling men in particular to be more in touch with their emotions that is such bullshit if you're more in touch with your emotions as a man then you're fucking up because most men are not gonna get the things that they want in life if they follow their emotions solely if they use their emotions as a guide and indicator of what actions that they should take in life instead of using their logic and critically thinking about what you should do being emotional is a female trait that's what females are supposed to be like their emotions are much more um how do you call it emphasized than male emotions they feel emotions to a higher degree than males do in general so for uh a man to do that that's just going against what a man is supposed to do right and particularly in the modern world where uh, well what I want to say before I talk about that is that in the past men used to be a lot more logical because there wasn't all this propaganda BS being pushed upon men like there is nowadays nowadays uh, society always tells men oh you need to be more emotional you need to care about your feelings when society doesn't even care about men's feelings they don't give a fuck about the issues that men are facing like for example uh, how men get divorce raped I just made up that term um, but basically whenever there's a divorce men always get screwed over in 90 plus percent of the cases right like it ruins men financially all the time uh, on top of that the dating world issues people sweep there's so many issues like homelessness crime etc etc people sw sweep all these issues under the rug they don't want to talk about them but these issues exist and one of the re reasons that they exist is because of men's emotionality because of men becoming weak and soft and giving into their emotions instead of doing the action that they should do instead of taking those actions that they should do because we've let society degrade itself in many ways that it should not have i'm not speaking on anything specific because i don't have all the answers i don't know everything i only know some things right and it's a nuanced topic not everything is totally black and white there's been a lot of progress and good things i think there's been more good things than bad things as society has advanced but there have also been a lot of problems that have not been addressed and that have been allowed to develop into compounding into larger and larger problems so now we've discussed what happens if somebody lets their emotions run them which is basically they're gonna have a shit life if they're a man you're gonna be a statistic a hundred percent because you're just gonna do what society programs you to do and you're gonna have a shit life and then you're probably gonna get a divorce and shit because your wife won't actually be attracted to you at the end of the day when you get married to her after she's already passed the prime of her life the median age of marriage is 28 i believe now 
could be a little bit off, but it's around 28. So obviously a woman is more beautiful when she's younger and she has a better chance of having children and these sorts of things. Fertility rates drop with age. But anyways, I digress. Now let's talk about the other possibility where you control your emotions and how do you control your emotions? There's a lot of different ways, but basically you have to find some ways that resonate with you in wherein you program yourself. We all have beliefs within ourselves and you may not know this, but we have a lot of cognitive dissonance without uh, within ourselves. So what is cognitive dissonance? It's when you have contradicting beliefs. For example, you might think that government is too big on one hand as one belief, and then you could have a contradicting belief at the exact same time and you don't realize it, wherein your other belief is that you think that government should support abortion, for example. Um, so these are contradicting beliefs if you think that people should pay taxes to abortion, for example. This is kind of a bad example. Uh, not It's not a very clear example. I think maybe a better example would be that you are... Uh, you think that you're, you're awesome, right? You think that you're great at everything, but then when it comes to... I don't know, social skills, for example, you think that you're trash at it. I, I, and you, when you're in a social situation, you think that you're not worthy. That's a possibility. If somebody holds those two beliefs, those are contradicting, right? Where they don't think that they're, where they think that they're awesome and they're a great person in one situation, but then in another situation, they have a different belief that doesn't serve them. So anyways, we all have these cognitive beliefs and uh, cognitive dissonance in our in some of our beliefs and we're not aware of them and what you can do is over time you can change your belief systems so how do you do this you can do it by taking action for example and through action and observation of the results of your actions you can for example gain confidence in an area in a certain area if you're playing chess and you play chess a lot and you win a lot of games over time and you see your rating increase and you see your skills increase then you're gonna change your belief like oh i guess i'm you change your belief from i'm bad at chess to i'm good at chess or i'm naturally talented at chess and it's just one example of taking action to change your beliefs another way is through programming yourself through doing things like uh mantras is one word that you can use to describe it but basically what do you call it? It's when you tell yourself, when you, for example, you look in the mirror and you're like, uh, I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm confident, or I'm great, I'm great, I'm great, I'm worthy of love, etc., etc. And you basically just like tell yourself these good things. And it's a, it's honestly a good practice to do. Like, I'm not dissing it. Both of these possibilities of reprogramming your mind are wonderful, I think.